this time we're going to ask this praise team to give us an opening selection, and then we're going to have a presentation uh, this morning. Then we'll have prayer by Deacon James Day.
is a mother is your first friend, your best friend, and your forever friend. Please remember that. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you.
Because it's what got us over. And it's still getting us over today. Lord, we thank you for passing, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for Jackie's mom. Yeah, yeah. Lord, there are other moms in here who I may not be aware of, but we thank you for their moms, Lord, yeah. who are still rearing their children's children. God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We do thank you. Thank you. And we thank you for the word that you have put in past the Spirit for this day. God, for the sick and the afflicted among us, we pray for the healing of their bodies. We pray for Mrs. O's mom, for the healing of her body. Those are in nursing homes and assisting living homes. We pray for the healing of God. And God, help us to not just honor mom today, but tomorrow and tomorrow's tomorrow. Because when mom is gone, there is no I wish I could have. There's no all we can for mom right now while we have mom. So when that day comes and mother is no longer physically with us, we won't have any reasons to feel ashamed about what we could have done and should have done. We will be thankful that we did what we could yes. while we had mom. Yes. So God, we thank you for this day. And we ask your continual blessings upon this day. And we lift up our sister Valerie this day while she is delivering word at another church. Bless her God and her endeavors. And we will, we will be so ever grateful to give your name the praise and the honor that you so richly deserve. We say amen. amen.
and Phyllis Jones and Joanne. We need to lift up all those in the of the Jones family. And, uh, certainly we need to lift up those who are here that we know that are here and going through different things in life that meet our prayers and our support. And certainly we're just glad for all that the Lord has done. We ask the Lord to strengthen the heart of Brother Joe Barnes. The Lord will strengthen him in all of his endeavors. And we're just so thankful for everything that the Lord has done for us because truly he has been grateful unto us. Yeah. To, continue to be people of prayer, people of faith, and knowing that the Lord has not brought us this far to leave us alone. There's a word for us this morning found in the book of 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, lifting verses 1 through 7. 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. Second Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. We have to say amen. Now the wife of one of the sons of the prophets cried to Elijah, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. But the creditor has come to take my two children to be his slaves. And Elijah said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what have you in the house? And she said, Your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, Go outside and borrow vessels from all your neighbors. Empty vessels, not too few. Then go in and shut the door behind yourself and your sons and pour it into all these vessels. And when one is full, set it aside. So she went from him and shut the door behind herself and her son. And as she poured, they brought the vessels to her. And when the vessels were full, she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another. Then the oil stopped flowing. She came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debts, for you and your sons can live on rest. If you remember this morning on this Mother's Day, I want to talk about a mother's jaw oil. A mother's job. After selection from a praise team, we hear from God's word.
The problem of so many of us in today's time, and especially I see it among young mothers, is that we forget the value that we have. Yes, sir. If you are a person, if you are a child of God, then you are somebody. If God has done anything for you, then you are somebody. And you are never walking around acting like you don't have any hope. Because when you have value, you can always go back and talk to the Lord. Does anybody know? says to him when she goes to Elijah, she said, your servant, my husband, is dead. Release us to me that her, that her husband had been a faithful servant of the Lord because he was a servant of Elijah. And she went on to say, and you know that your servant feared the Lord. In other words, this woman did just not live in any kind of household. But the head of the household, who was her husband, feared the Lord. When you serve the Lord with gladness, when you serve the Lord with fullness, you have the right to be able to go before the Lord and declare to the Lord, Lord, I need your help. Yes, There's something in my life that is not, not quite right, but I, I need some help from the Lord. But I want to say to everybody who is seated here this morning, to everybody who is listening, by virtue of being a child of God, you are somebody. Yes, but I want every mother to know that if you, even if you had to rear your children on your own, you're somebody. Even if you had, to, you had to scrape and scrap, that's all right. You are somebody. Everybody can remember times in our lives when things weren't going well. We had to put things together. Sometimes we had to put two things together to make one. Has anybody ever been there? Yeah. It, it, it took two pieces of God to make one good job. It, it took some things in life that you had to kind of just link together with the help of the Lord. And the Lord made a way out of no way. Has there been anybody that's just on this one? But every day of my life, but I had to learn how to lean and depend on God. In other words, when I didn't know where it was going to come from, I had to put my trust in the Lord. The trust in the Lord was going to work it out. Here this woman is, and she approaches Elijah. She says, I got a problem, if I may paraphrase. They're going to take my children because I can't pay my debts. In other words, I've got a situation that I can't handle by myself. But she recognized the fact that she was somebody. A husband that served faithfully, and she knew that uh, by virtue of uh, her position in life and what she had, was able to achieve with the help of the Lord, that she wasn't just any old body. And I, so, so oftentimes I become, uh, my, my heart becomes heavy when I look around, and sometimes people give up on themselves. You ever been around folks that seem like they just give up on themselves? They don't think that, that uh, people are putting in that year that there's nobody and they don't think much of themselves. But I want you to know today that God wants you to come out of whatever you're in. Yes, and He wants you to reassure you that you are somebody. Just because you struggle, every child of God has struggled at some point in time. You know? Don't hold your head down. Go ahead and raise that child. Don't hold your head down. Go ahead and become somebody because uh, when you're in Christ, you are a new creature. I was saying that to my friend. Here she is. She goes to Elijah because she realizes that she's somebody. And this is what I like about the text. You know, I like about this text and preaching from this text. Notice here that everything that happens that Elijah does requires participation. Some of us, we find ourselves in some situations and we want somebody to fix it for us rather than to participate. And the problem is in your life. I was asking about this uh, praying with me this morning. In other words, when problems come your way, God sometimes requires us to participate in the process of resolving the problem. You hear what I'm saying? So oftentimes, there's so many people who are lazy and want the Lord to do everything. But when I read the text, I'm reminded that Elijah didn't lay hands on the problem. Elijah didn't just speak to the problem. But he told the woman in so many words to get involved and solve in her own problem. Yes, my, my, my beloved, so oftentimes the answer to your problem can be right before you if you just listen to the Lord and do it the Lord's way. But we sometimes think that the Lord ought to move in a certain way, in a certain manner. But we come to understand that that's not all that good. So here he is. He asked her. He says, uh, well, what can I do for you? Uh-huh. He asked this widow. And he, he also asked another question. He said, well, tell me, what is it that you have yes, sir. in your home? Well, what's in your house? What, what, what do you have at your home this morning? Uh -huh. And I don't so oftentimes we need to look at our lives and we need to realize that we need to take an inventory and a survey of what God has already done for us. Now, this is what he was really asking you, 
asking her, uh, we come to understand that when we read the text, that, that what she told him all she had was a jar of oil. That the jar of oil had value. Yeah. Because we see later on that he tells her, gives her the instruction to sell the oil, pay debts, and live off of the rest. So what I'm trying to tell you, when you have a value-added attitude in your mind, when, you're, when your heart is filled with value, you know that you are valued, God has given you something valuable in your life. But sometimes you don't always realize it. I wish I had somebody to pray. You need to stop turning your nose up at what the Lord has done for you because he's done something for you. And maybe you discounted it. Maybe you haven't looked at it like it's, like it's much of anything. But you ought to stop and count the blessings that the Lord has already bestowed upon you. And if you have a problem that you're going through, take a survey of what God has already done for you. And smoke to learn how to just survey that life and see how good God has been to you. And then look back and see where he's brought them from. And they look back and see how he, he's been good to them in spite of themselves. And they look back and see that he's brought them up a mighty long way. Then we will walk around and hold our hands up high and tell somebody, yes, the Lord has blessed me. And he blessed me once. He can bless me twice. Somebody ought to have a testimony. Say the Lord can make a way out of the whole world. And here this lady asked her what she has. She says, All I have is a job. How many of us have had those same type of statements? You got to fill in the blank. But all I have is all I have. And many times we found out, we found that our backs were against the wall, and we 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 uttered those same words. All I have. Oh, it doesn't look like much. I don't know how I'm going to make it, but all I have. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this, but all I have. I don't know how the door is going to open, but all I have. And it doesn't look like much. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. Because people are looking at me and they say, you ain't you don't have much. But all I have is a job. Notice how the Lord blesses her with the all. Yeah. The second point that you need to realize is that not only do you need to go through life and realize that you are of value and God has given you some things of value, but you need to learn how to use what you have. Yes. Yes. Uh, he said, what do you have in your home? I, I didn't tell you to go look at what somebody else has, but, 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 but take a survey, take an inventory of your own home, and let's tell them that we need to take an inventory of what God has already done for you. The key to your... That you already possess, and when you put God with it, you got something that will take care of your problem. I wish I had some. We need to start looking at the things that He's done for us, like we don't have anything. And He tells her, He says, uh, What do you have in your home? So this requires a first of all to do a personal inventory of our own situation. And what I like about the text is that's not all, because remember, this is participatory. Which means that it requires her to do something. Not only does she have this, this uh, draw, one draw of all, but he tells her to do something else. He says, now go to your neighbors and borrow some things. Go get some stuff that you can do something with the all. In other words, my beloved, the Lord is trying to tell us that we don't need to sit on our seat and do nothing. But when we've got a problem in our life, take what we have and take it before the Lord and, and follow the instruction that the Lord gives us. So many times and so often. I look at people who things that we're going through when you have trouble in your life, when you have trouble in the situation. Sometimes the answer is before you. You got trouble in your marriage, look within your own heart. You got trouble in your home, look within your own heart. You got trouble in the world in which we live. Look at what the Lord has done for you and what he, how he's blessed you. And ask the Lord, how in the world can I make a difference in this world in which we live? See, we ought to be looking at life and trying to make a difference. Not only in our own lives, but in the lives that are around us. When you look around, you say, this is all I have. The Lord asked you that. And you said, tell me what you have. Whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So she did as Elijah told her. She realized that she had one child old. Mm -hmm. Just as he told her to go to all the neighbors and get some vessels and bring them there. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what I like about the text is when you follow the Lord's instructions, mm -hmm. You never have to worry about the supply. When you do what God said to the Lord, you don't, have, you don't never have to worry about how it's going to work out. Because when you take what you have and you put God with you, when you take what you have and even though it doesn't look like much, when you put the Lord with it, I just want somebody to know that it'll be 
I just want somebody to know today that if you put your trust in the Lord, it'll be all right. If you put your trust and faith in God, He'll make a way out of no way. Is that anybody's testimony? Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? You ought to tell somebody, see what the Lord has done for me because he brought me from a mighty long way. You ought to tell somebody that when I didn't think I had anything at all, the Lord opened up the windows of heaven and poured me out a blessing and I didn't have no room to receive. You ought to tell somebody that my God is a way maker. You ought to tell
that heaven won't be your home. We offer Christ to you as you stand to your feet. Perhaps you did today, you already made a decision for Christ that you would have a church home. We need you to come by letter, Christian experience in Canada's baptism. It's the Lord is speaking to your heart. Don't put off to tomorrow, but He's telling you what you need to do right now. If you're here today, you desire prayer. The Lord knows your heart. And as we pray, you ask the Lord to speak to your specific situation. Eternal and all wise heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful once again for this opportunity to come together as your people. Some have come for one thing, Lord, and some have come for another. But all of us come today realizing, Lord, that without you, we can't do nothing. All we come today because we are grateful for your keeping, Father. And Lord, we ask your blessing upon all these mothers that are represented here, those who are listening, those who couldn't be here, that you strengthen their homes. And now, Lord, we pray that you just look upon every situation, Lord. Somebody needs healing in their body, Lord. Move on every hand. Somebody needs this divine strength, Lord, because there's something on the horizon that they must face. Somebody, Lord, needs more peace, Lord. Oh, Lord, we know you're able to grant it. Now look down upon us as your people, Lord, and help us to do the work that you've commissioned us to do. Help us to be a church and a body of believers, Lord, that you can be proud of. Help us to do the things that are pleasing in your sight. Father, we have so many situations, Lord. We ask that you look upon our family situations, Lord. You know all about it. Help us to move ourselves out of the way that you can speak to us and tell us how to clean up our messes, Lord. How we can straighten out our situations, Lord. We are, we are tuned and we're attentive right now, Lord. We ask that you speak to our hearts. Oh, Lord, we're thankful for everything that you've done and everything that you're about to do. Now, Lord, bless us as only you can. For these and all the blessings we ask and we pray. In the marvelous this master's name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and let the people of God say, Amen. 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 Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers who are in attendance. We will pray, prepare for our closing benediction at the church. Say, Amen. Amen. Sorry!